I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Subscribe, like, share if you like the content. And yeah, today's um, video is was inspired by Mr. Biscuit. And um, because I never knew, well, it, it never really crossed my mind that when you think about all the foreigners that are in this country, that if you had a car accident with one, what happens with your car insurance? You wouldn't think it would make a difference, would you? Because you'd think, okay, whether I knock down a foreigner, somebody who's just come into the country, or whether I knock down an indigenous person or have a car accident with an indigenous person, what difference does it make? It's the same procedure, you would have thought. But he he was saying in his comment, he was commenting about something else I'd written about, but he commented that his car insurance would not cover um, hitting um, a, a, a foreign person. And I'm like, that's a bit bizarre. So, you know, me with my little nosy self, I went and had a look up why that was. And why it is, is that because um, if people are visiting from abroad, that's not your average in people, foreign people who are permanent residents. But if they're not permanent residents and they're visiting from abroad, it could be that their car insurances are totally different from ours. And it's really hard to get compensation. Also, some of them may not even be insured. So that's the reason. So some car companies, some car insurers will not insure you if you knock down a foreign national or a foreign person. And so a lot of, there is a way around it, which I'll read out to you in a minute, um, that you may get your some insurance or some re recompense, but it, it's, it's really quite, it's something that I would not have really thought about. And yet when you think about, um, how many people visit the country. They reckon there's so many foreigners who visit us every day who could be renting cars, who could be driving around. You're just going to think, okay, um, okay, they don't speak English, no big deal. I'll take their um, number plates and, you know, I'll ask them to show me something with their name and address on it and Bob's your uncle. But it isn't that straightforward. So I'm going to read you what I found out just in case... Um, you have an unfortunate accident. I don't wish it on anyone, but just in case you do, I thought you'd find this information useful. And thank you, Mr. Biscuit, for your comment. Okay, so does your car insurance cover hitting foreign drivers? So you're going to need to have to find that out for a start. Um, involved in a car accident that isn't your fault, most people want to claim compensation. This can be either personal injury compensation or compensation for your vehicle that has been damaged in the collision. So, suppose you hit a foreign car driver who is here on a visit, driving a rental car. What happens if you hit a foreign driver who is not a permanent resident of the UK? I'm going to tell you. A recent report suggested that the different attitudes to driving, driving road conditions and speed limits between the European countries can be extremely confusing to drivers from abroad in the UK. It is estimated that around 18,000 traffic accidents a year occur due to drivers from other countries, and this is especially true of heavy goods vehicles. If you find yourself involved in a road accident with a foreign driver, it says don't panic, drivers from abroad who are involved in a UK road accident are governed by the same obligations as if they were a driver from the UK. Don't think that that's okay though. Okay, traffic accidents in the UK with drivers from abroad. When you're involved in a crash with a U in the UK with someone from abroad, you do not act any differently than you would with a UK citizens. All drivers should have insurance of some type, whether insurance has come from a rental car agency or is their own home car insurance. They should be covered to drive the car they're driving or they shouldn't be doing it. If they don't speak English, take plenty of photographs, 
car registration should help insurers locate the name of the driver and get him or her to call you from their mobile number so you have their number. That was my little two pence worth. The correct procedure should be to obtain as many details as possible. Name, address, contact number, registration plates, and some of them have two of them, so take both registration plates, and anything else you need is important. If the driver is struggling to understand English, simply get them to write down their details and make sure you have their registration number. You may need this in the future for compensation claim. Also, if there are witnesses around, get as much information from them as you can. Always keep a note of the time of the accident and if you have a camera or a camera phone, photograph the scene so you can show this to your solicitor if you need one. Compensation claims and foreign drivers in the UK. It can often be difficult to get compensation from a foreign driver as their insurance procedures may be different or they may be simply uninsured. So this is the reason why I think some, photo, some motor companies, some motor insurers will not insure if you hit a foreign driver because there's no guarantee they're going to get their money back. That's just my opinion. Um, if this is your experience, you can contact the Motor Insurance Bureau for help. So write that down, the Motor Insurance Bureau. They may be able to provide you with details of the driver and their insurance company as long as you have the correct registration plate. Remember that in some countries, some of the larger trucks and lorries have a different registration plate on the main cabin than on the trailer. So try to obtain both if possible. The Motor Insurance Bureau are also able to help if a driver who was involved in a collision with you doesn't have insurance or the insurance company they do have doesn't have a UK counterpart. In these cases, the Motor Insurance Bureau will normally control the case and follow it up for you. So that is important information, the Motor Insurance Bureau, because they will follow it up for you. Um, and likewise, accidents from abroad. I'm just going to go quickly through that. If you're in another country and you have an accident, if you're traveling abroad, learning the new road rules, speed limits, the driving attitudes can be difficult to obtain in a short period of time. It often takes months, if not years, to fully drive a car like a local. So it's no surprise that many people are involved in road accidents when holidaying abroad. If you're unfortunate enough to be involved in this type of situation, there are certain steps you should take to be sure you're following the correct, correct procedure. <clears throat> Knowing these in advance can be difference between a lengthy compensation claim and a relatively straightforward case. Green card scheme and driving abroad, very important. Until fairly recently, being involved in a road traffic accident abroad was a legal minefield of complications and often proved impossible for a solicitor to fully bring to justice. In most cases, where individuals were allowed to prosecute, they required solicitors who had a series of offices in a variety of countries so that they could deal with illegal issues locally. Recently, however, a new scheme known as the Green Card Scheme has been introduced throughout Europe. The Green Card Scheme is a document that is officially recognised in over 40 countries, including all of those in Europe aside from Russia. It allows for the free movement of vehicles across boundary lines and borders and aims to protect drivers who have become involved in a collision with foreign vehicles. So that's really important if you didn't know that. The green card scheme doesn't actually provide individuals with any kind of insurance, which is sad, but it does show that you meet the minimum requirements for a third party liability from your own motor insurance policy. So at least you have that. It won't be fully calm, but it protects you in that sense. At the scene of an accident abroad, if you are involved in an accident abroad, try to stay calm. Don't leave the scene until you're fully aware of what has occurred and you've spoken with the other driver and police. In most cases where an individual is involved in an accident abroad, 
the police must be called. Always remember not to admit any liability and only sign the European Accident Statement. This is if it happens in the EU, when you're sure that you understand the situation. This paperwork is a way to ensure that the correct information has been exchanged between those who are involved in the accident and you should have been given a copy of this before you leave the scene of the crime. Always have your driving license, insurance certificate, registration document and green card available at all times when you're abroad. This makes it easier at the scene of an accident. Many people panic as they may not fully understand what is happening at the collision area due to the language barriers. If you feel that you are not following what you're being told, ask for an interpreter. You're entirely within your legal rights to do so. <clears throat> Claiming after an accident abroad, if your vehicle is still roadworthy and you're able to drive it, if you don't need to contact your insurance until you return to the UK, assuming it's not more than two weeks away from the time of the accident, it must be within two weeks. If your car is not mobile, contact your insurance immediately and they may be able to help you back on the move again. If your insurer has local representatives in the country, you're in. Contact them for further advice. If you've had an accident within the European economic area, you may have a chance at pursuing a compensation claim against the agents in the UK. If you've had an accident in another country that isn't part of the EEA, then you should seek legal advice on how long a claim may take. Generally, legal action will be undertaken in the country where the accident occurred. So speak to a good solicitor for further advice. And I'm going to put the link where I got that um, in the description. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.